guys have seen that in a few episodes hiding behind me. Hi, I'm Larry, and it's Cook Like a Caveman. Today you get to find out what that thing is. It's a sausage stuffer. So, you see me bone out pork, you see me get stuff ready for prosciutto, pancetta, bacon, country ham, capicole. Today, we're making sausage. And I've got three buckets there with pork. Each has about 15 pounds of it, just, you know, plus or minus ounces. Um, so you need some hardware that you probably won't have. Sausage stuffer is one of them. Don't necessarily need a sausage Can stuffer. Can use something different. One of these. It's a hand crank grinder. Um, I got this a while ago. It works. It's uh, tedious. It's monotonous, but it works. What's this? This You're is that. The grinder. But this attaches to my stand mixer. Um, a lot of different companies make stand mixers. A lot of them are great. I like the one I have. Um, and if they all, by all means, if they want to sponsor Cook Like a Caveman, they can, and I will mention their name. But if you saw it, you know what you would know what type it is. So this attaches to my stand mixer, and you can use this. This isn't as grueling. You don't have to crank, but it's still monotonous. So I recommend getting a sausage stuffer. You can get them, um, I found mine used, on, on a trading site called Kijiji. Um, eBay, eBay classifieds, I think is what they are in the US. Um, but that's where I found mine. And you can find them there. You can find different types. Uh, this is a cylinder. There are horn stuffers that, you know, they, it's like a plunger. And, and they work. They work fine. Um, I'm happy with mine. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm making three types of sausage. I'm making a variation of bacon onion cheddar without the bacon, and I'll get into that later. I'm making mild sausage and salami, and I'm making hot sausage and salami. The mild and the hot I'm going to dry. The bacon onion cheddar is going to be fresh. So, what you need, one of these, it's a scale. You can find these at hardware stores, at supply restaurant supply stores, and even grocery stores. And I don't I think I only paid 10 bucks for this, and, and it works great. So, all sauce every has three ingredients. Meat, pork, beef, veal, lamb, chicken, whatever you want. Experiment with it, by all means. I want you to experiment with it, and I want you to tell me what it is. Cook like a caveman at outlook.com. Let me know what you did. So three main ingredients, meat, salt, pepper. Everything else is extra. If you have those three ingredients and you have the proportions proper, man, you're going to have something that you will enjoy. Your neighbors and your friends will be envious. So what I like to do is I'm going to move the camera. Okay, move the feet. Hi, this is not my good side. So i got the scale on. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see. Here's what we do. We're going to tear it. This is set to pounds. Because when I learned how to make sausage, everything was done in pounds. Not just what my, my dad did. I'm going to do three and a half ounces per 10 pounds. And I got three batches of 15 pounds. So I need three and a half plus an ounce and three quarter. So four and a half, five and a quarter ounces of salt. There is more exciting stuff to watch on the internet than me measuring salt. But, if you want to learn how to make sausage, this is what we're doing today. Three and a half, four and a half, five and a quarter, right there. Now I'm the only one in the house that likes things really spicy. Everyone else doesn't, which is fine. So I am going to add three quarters of an ounce per uh, 10 pounds. So that means three quarters and then half of three quarters is 0.375. Sound right guys? Uh, three quarters of an ounce. So we're going to re-tear it. I'm going to put an ounce, right? 
that looks good enough to me. Um, welcome back. Um, you know, I said I wasn't going to bore you with uh, grinding, but I'm going to show you how to grind. It's not meat. It's onions. So here's that grinder. I've got a board that I've got a clamp to on my butcher block. And I've got a little container to collect everything. And what I used to do, what I've normally done, I would just try to cut the onion in small cubes. And what ends up happening is you get you get a lot of big chunks. So I'll show you. Do not get your hands in here. No matter how slow it's going, it will still hurt if you get it cramped up. The interesting thing, and you know what, I'm still not completely happy with this technique as opposed to cutting it into cubes. Because I'm getting, a, basically what I'm doing is I'm juicing the onion, which might be interesting. First, remember, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to give it this is the last of it, run it through, and I'll probably give it another 10 or 15 spins because in a grinder, you've got this is called um, a throat and there's material that can be stuck in here and you want to get rid of it all. There's a part missing on this. There's a screw that goes on the back here. And you can get these grinders at hardware stores and super centers, $40, $50. You can get electric ones for about $100. Let's see how First we can decide. Here's our salt and pepper mix, ground onions, grated cheese, and the pork. Um, this is a bus bucket. You can get these at restaurant supply stores and they're six or seven dollars. They're not very expensive. When when I store my pork, I go for these. They're 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 two dollars at the dollar store around here anyway. And and they're convenient and they're clean and they're food safe. So why not? So we've got our three mixes. We got our we got our, our ingredients. We got the pork here. Now spread out. I could have ground all this on that hand crank grinder. I could have ground it on my stand mixer. I have a big grinder in the garage, but it's not hooked up and I need to find a lid top for it. Um, what I did is I went to the store and I had it ground up. A lot of places will charge you to grind meat and that's okay. It's what they do. It's what we do for, for our living. Um, some might do it for free and that, that's awesome. If you have a a butcher or a grocery store that does it for free then you know what hold on to that grocery store and I'm just gonna spread it like that nice coating the fit and grated cheddar cheese pork it's bacon onion cheddar the bacon's missing so I got a substitute you guys might hate me it's a chemical liquid smoke so what I think I'll do is I'll give it about a dozen dozen drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. That should be enough to give it that smoky flavor. This is a fresh sausage. I am going to stuff this and freeze it. And then get your hands in there. Now, it takes a minute or two to get a really good mix. And one thing that's really good here Oh, that liquid smoke is getting to my eyes and the onion, man, it might be a good idea if you're going to use liquid smoke and onion, it's reacting huge, is to wear contacts. So what you'll see very quickly is that I'm getting a really, really good mix. This great arm workout. What do you guys think? Good looking mix. Check the cheese. So I guess this would be rather than bacon onion cheddar because I was not going to pay seven dollars 
for 375 grams, which is about 12 ounces of bacon. So I guess this would be called smoky onion bacon. SOB! Hey! You SOB! This, this oh, is a really good that. looking mix too. I'm really happy with the way this mixed out. And welcome back. So you saw me mix the uh, smoky onion cheddar is what I've decided to call that batch because there is no bacon in it. Um, and now we're going to start stuffing sausage. Now what we've got is we've got our stuffing station set up. The camera's like eight feet away so I'm sorry if you can't hear me quite right. But what I got, I got the mild sausage in here. I've got some excess here and I've got the tub that I mixed it in. I have set it in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make salami first. Um, I've made sausage for years, but never made salami. Um, salami is a dry cured product and as Grace said it should be interesting. So what you do is to open, open the casing up. If you want to know what these casings are made of, email me, cooklikeacaveman at outlook.com, and I will tell you. If you do not want to know what they are, don't ask. So, the casing goes on here, like so. And I think I'm going to do one length like this in mild, and another length like this in hot. And I will need just a second. What we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to tie it here. Here's a string you're yep. seeing a video that I did of how to tie a butcher's knot. I'm not using that today. Um, it's because how it, it wouldn't work quite right and it would actually tear through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a length, cut it like so. Be careful not to kill anybody. And it's, it's, it's just a knot. Okay. Now, if my assistant would love to start cranking, that would be awesome. Now, let's just move that. Okay. Slower than normal. Okay. So, Grace is going to turn. There's a crankshaft right here. It's going to put a piston down. Go. A little faster. And now what we need, now I need some string. Hold that. So what we got here, about a foot, it's about a foot long, that's fine. Okay. Not quite. We are going to take a needle and pop them all in. So what I did is I just made another knot here. And now I'm going to go about an inch. And I'm going to make another knot here. And um, keep in mind, um, I've got my Facebook page. Um, check on my, uh, my information. It's there. And we crank again. Start. And this one, we're going to make about the same length as that one. More, another half a crack. Stop. Stop pumpkins. I know. And then what I'll do is I'll take this little length. This will not go to waste. I will figure something out to do with this one. And there we go. We got our two links. This is mild salami. One's longer, one's longer than the other. That's okay. You know what we can do? That was the second one. So we'll take the salami cases out of the way. 
out of the way. Don't need the knife for now, so we'll set that out of the way. Oh, no, I get the sausage. I'm just going to... You know, I need more because you have that mix. Regular sausage now. Now we need... Well, they're going to be catch toys. It's a miniature salami. You're smart. Load the casing onto the horn. This is a sausage horn. This is the yeah. Okay, start thinking. So I'm hoping that uh, this little video shows you that it's a little video shows you that it's not very hard to make your own sausage. You don't need equipment like this. You can use basic equipment that you find in any hardware store or general store for that matter and use as ingredients that you always have in your own house. I'm hoping that this inspires you to get into your kitchen and try something amazing. Because you know, if a caveman and a cave girl can do this, you can do it. We'll see you later. Okay. What about the hot? We're going to do that? But we don't need to shoot video.